So, I will just do an introduction today to uh, some, I will tell you a little bit more about multi act games. So, a multi act game is some is simply one that is not a single act game ok. That means, there is at least one player who acts at least mo at least twice on some path of uh, some path of the tree ok. Now, if the uh, so once once a game is a multi act game, can you tell me qualitatively what is it that is changing from uh, as compared to a single act game? What is this one x? We need to model or me at least pay attention to let's say some some new aspect of the game. And what is that? Sorry. Ha, huh, strategy space yes of course, but that is the, that that is that anyway you know changes from when you go from static game to dynamic game. But now from single act to multi act what qualitatively something is changing. Yeah, that is the case even in a day. Huh, okay. So, once a player is acting more than once a new angle comes in to the theory of games which is the issue of memory. Because you are now, ref, or up till now we were only talking of what a player knows at each step, uh, whenever it is its turn to act. Now you can also ask what does he know relative to what he knew earlier and that is the issue of memory, right. If he was acting just once there is no issue of memory at all, right. So, so in a multi act game you have to pay attention to memory. Now, uh, so the, the so, games the general rule is that you can say multi act games get extremely complicated if you are if you allow for arbitrary sort of memory structures ok, where players can forget things across uh, across time instance that they have played or can forget what uh, um, you know which uh, whether whether they are at this stage of the game or that stage of the game and so on all the if you allow for all kinds of crazy all of those are well defined games ok well defined multi act games, but they just become extremely hard to analyze you the only way to analyze them is to write out a huge normal form and then you know just go about me mechanically finding the equilibrium. If you want to hope for some kind of structured way of thinking about these games you need to have a some structure to the memory of the of each player ok. So, the way uh, so a typical so a multi act game will as I said a broad category is that any uh, you know any player uh, there is at least one player who acts at least at least twice along some path ok. So, uh, now a but um, the kind of multi act games that you can actually study uh, you know in a systematic way are, are what are called multi act games in feedback form. Okay. Feedback basically this word comes from control theory and the reason uh, feedback essentially refers to something that you knew in the past which is being passed on to the next stage right that is essentially the idea of feedback. So, if we, so if the if the game has a feedback form then you can what you can kind of uh, uh, what you what kind of happens is that players do not lose lose what uh, access to uh, information that they had in the past. So, they have effectively recall and those kind of games are the ones that we can we can study you know systematically ok. So, I will give you a uh, uh, I will give you a, um, a, a first let us write out a general structure of a multi act game again as I said an arbitrary multi act game is very difficult to analyze we can start and getting before we get to feedback games we can at least start talking of things like stages to a game ok. So, if there are no stages also it is complete where you know anything can happen then it is again extremely unstructured. So, first step is to actually have a game where there is a time access involved which keeps track of stages ok time 1, time 2, time 3 and so on ok. And this starts becoming more like a state space type model where you have a way of keeping track of time and you have a way of defining what the state of the game is at that time right ok. So, so let me uh, let me write out that sort of model. So, definition here stage wise
So, the tree is divided into stages. And what do we mean by stages? Uh, each stage is a you can say is a single act game. So, each player plays at most once in each stage ok. So, stages means that at most or you can even say exactly once you can add a trivial action where he does nothing. So, you can say let us say plays once in a stage ok. So, when you are in stage 1 all there n there are suppose n players so you are in stage 1 n players will act each of them will act once and then stage 2 will begin. Okay, that is so there is some you know kind of an independent clock or a referee or whatever keeping track of stages ok. That is the sort of structure we have. So, tree is divided into stages and now players are aware of which stage the game is in ok. So, that means what does this mean? Different stages exactly. So, no information set contains nodes from more than one stage right that is that is essentially there. If there is an information set that passes goes from one stage uh, contains nodes from more than one stage then it means that that player does not know whether he is in this stage or that stage ok. So, no information set contains nodes from more than one stage ok. This is this is stage wise. So, this is what it makes a game stage wise. Now, in addition it will be f so, if it is it is in feedback form. Now, feedback form means that players uh, uh, so I will let me explain this. So, a feedback form so at each st each stage begins with uh, so a player uh, uh, let us say so uh, so what we have assumed so far is no information set contains nodes from more than one stage right. But at the start of a stage is there clarity that the stage has begun? Uh, Let us say a part of the tree that we can say is uh, has started in that stage. So, let what I uh, let me explain what I what I mean. Suppose you can you can have a situation like this where suppose this these are this part of the tree is stage 1 and now stage 2 is beginning ok. Some this there could be multiple nodes and all that in between here ok. Now, the first acting player at stage 2 ok this part is stage 2. Now, the first acting player at stage 2 could have an information set that goes like this ok. So, he knows that stage 2 has begun, but what has what information has he lost? No, so when he is confused between these two nodes this node and this node right, what is he confused about? Yeah, there could be multiple players in this. Uh, so, this could have uh, you know I am just drawing this as a tree, but there could be you know th uh, there could be this could be a very very complex tree here with, but each player plays once in each stage. So, but the point is the new stage has started here with these and there is at the first acting guy here, he is confused between these two red nodes. What would that mean? He knows that stage 2 has begun, but what he has the information he is lost or, or what he does not know let us say forget about lost. What he does not know is what happened in the previous stage, what was the conclusion in of the previous stage. He does not know if the previous stage concluded with the uh, with the red node or with this blue node. 
right so so when you divide the game into stages if you want for the game to get, be in feedback form essentially whatever happened in the first stage okay there should be clarity that that is from where the new next stage is beginning so essentially there is a a well defined uh, sort of end to the first stage uh, from which a new game uh, the next stage is beginning of course players have to strategize acro uh, across whatever is the number of stages if there are k stages to the game they have to strategize over the k stages but when when playing in the next stage they know that this is what is the history of the previous stages is this clear so what this means is you cannot allow an information set for the first acting player to have more than one node okay the the first acting player in each stage starts with a singleton information set okay all right so let 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 me let's start putting on putting down these requirements so in the feedback form you need in addition to this the first acting player in the of stage 1 so the first acting player in each stage now acting player in each stage has a singleton information set So think of this as like you know, uh, like in tennis, you know, uh, the first set is done. You know what the score at the end of the first set is, and then the next set is beginning, right? The reason we are imposing this is because otherwise the problems are. Uh, this is the only class of problems that we can systematically analyze. So we are putting some structure uh, on on the class of problems so that there can be you know some sort of systematic analysis. Sorry. No, a player is playing more than once. These are multi. These are multi-act games. The game is divided into stages. Okay, and in each stage, a player plays at most once, or exactly once. Okay, so in stage one, each player plays once. Stage two, each player plays once. Now, the first acting player of stage two should start with a singleton information set. Okay, this is one requirement. There are more requirements also. Now, this guy is what this means is if this is a singleton information set, what this means is that so if these are singleton information sets, okay, what this means is that the first acting player, let's say it's uh, I'll call this some guy, suppose this is player 3 who starts in this stage 2. Okay, now player 3 now knows that this is where the game started from, this blue node is where the game's. Uh, is 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 where stage two has started. Now the the players that follow this should also have this information. Okay, so everyone must be clear that which sort of sub game in stage two they are in. Is this clear? So you cannot have a situation where, for example, something like this. For example, so player three, for example, here player three knows that. This is that this is where the game ended. He knows that it's ended at blue at the blue node or ended at the red node. Uh, sorry, at, this is where the stage one ended. He knows that it ended at the blue node or the red node. But the later acting player is confused about that. Say, so let's say later acting player is four. Player four. Player four doesn't know whether stage one ended with the blue node or red node. You can imagine the kind of complications this would result in. Essentially, what this would happen that what it would mean is that player three knows the the score at the end of stage one, but player four does not. Right? He doesn't know. I mean, what was the conclusion of stage one? Right? So a lot of these things we take for granted when we have a game that happens through multiple rounds. And in fact, whenever we module things in state space form, we actually take these things for granted that there is something that. You know uh, that there is a systematic sharing of inf uh, passing on of information. All right. So the next requirement is that information sets of uh, other players are such that.
none of them includes nodes okay nodes corresponding to branches emanating from two or more different information sets sets of the first acting player of the stage. So what this means is essentially if you now these each of these uh, you look at any of these trees these are sub extensive forms in their own right because all information sets of players are contained within these. If the nodes are here the information sets are also here itself no information set will grow from go from one sub branch like this to another sub branch out here right. So that what this therefore means is every time a stage begins it can it can be thought of as an entity in itself you do not have to uh, think of there is no uncertainty about whether you are in the uh, you know this subtree or you are in this subtree for any player all right okay but th that does not mean that players have perfect information okay uh, so players could have loss of information for example it could very well be that uh, so this as i said is not allowed so, but but any of these kind of things are allowed. So, for example, it is quite okay for a player to not know with you know within the stage whether he is at this node or this node. So, long as they do not stretch outside of uh, you know the, the so long as these information sets do not go across from this branch into this branch and they do not go across from one stage to another we are perfect that is perfectly okay yeah. Ah, now we can ask for more ok now we can ask for more uh, it does not have to be ladder nested but you can now so every stage effectively can be sort of is kind of like a uh, uh, single is now basically like a single act game provided you could slap on the payoffs at the leaf nodes right. Uh, so now you can ask ok what kind of single act game that is ok it can be nested ladder nested etc etc and then you what that is then you can hope what you can hope to do is basically use feedback essentially that you, you you start doing start solving for the game using a dynamic programming like argument start from the last stage solve for an equilibrium in the last stage for every subtree that comes in the last stage replace you know uh, put the payoffs at the leaf node then go to the la the last but one stage and so on and so forth is this clear? So, if as I said, as I said, I keep emphasizing this if the information sets go across different legs of the tree, you are in trouble because then you will not be able to decompose in this kind of a neat manner, right? Okay. So, yeah, so I will just uh, add to what was just said. So, if these, if the single act games at each stage. are ladder nested, nested, then the game is in ladder nested or nested feedback form.
Okay, so we can just write out what we are looking for as far as the uh, equilibrium is concerned. Now, of course, a Nash equilibrium is very uh, would uh, you can just write out Nash equilibrium in the usual sense. But now we can look for a Nash equilibrium which will hold in this feedback in this feedback sort of manner, right? That what would that mean? What so sup, what that would mean is that suppose you have you have a game like this of k stages. Okay, so suppose this is stage 1, this is stage k. Now, if, if you have a game like this of k stages, now what you can look for is that, well, in the kth stage, every such node, each of these nodes is a singleton information set, right? So, you start from that subtree that starts from the, in that, in that, in that stage, look at that subtree corresponding that that is uh, uh, emanating from that singleton information set find its equilibrium okay then go go up keep replace that subtree as i said by the payoff of that tree and go up and go, and and so on now what you would be then doing effectively is you would be solving for you what you would be solving for then is a, is an equilibrium in which you are in which every player at every stage is being recursively rational right so which means he is so, he is the, the in, in every in every stage the equilibrium is being found for every possible past actions that you uh, every possible past strategies that you could have played that the players could have played right so which means that no matter what he was played earlier suppose you get to this point then as a function of this node i'll find the equilibrium irrespective of what i had played earlier right it's what you know in 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 control we call this a markov policy right essentially you take an action you where the 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 action is a function of the state at that time so think so so, so what you find is an equilibrium correspond for this tree for this subtree or this sub extensive form which is now a single act game you and you find it for that one without taking into consideration what was done pr prior to this right and then assuming that you have solved for this you then uh, propagate it backwards what this gives you is a is a is a set of, is a profile of strategies that are in equilibrium at every stage in addition to being in equilibrium across in the full game okay so what this pro ends up doing is basically it means that players are being rational at every stage and not just uh, you know rational in the game as a whole okay we saw this even in single act games the same kind of logic will now hold but now it will be in a multi act uh, setting because now in every stage that same logic will be applied is this clear okay so how would i express this so this is what this is this is then a more demanding notion so this is what is called a feedback nash equilibrium okay so i have ji which is cost of player i so i'll explain what my notation is I'll just Give me a minute. So, I have written this for stage k, okay. Uh, so, this is this is written for stage k. I will explain what my notation is here. My so gamma, remember play, player i will now have a strategy in each stage for each stage, 
okay so gamma i is will be denoted like this gamma i1 to gamma i k this is these are the strategies of this is the strategy of strategy of player i in stage 1 and this is the strategy of player i in stage k okay so every stage he has some information sets actions you have a function mapping information sets to actions so that is the strategy for that player in that stage okay now now gamma sub this thing so sub k here or sub k uh, okay is, uh, this is the to, uh, profile of strategies of all n players in stage k this is okay so this is the prof so this is gamma 1 k till gamma n k okay so this is the profile of strategies of all n players in stage k now what am i asking for in a feedback nash equilibrium what we are asking for in a feedback nash equilibrium is this so i have first time asking writing this only for stage k okay so at stage k regardless of so you have this is the payoff of player i when he plays his star strategy in stage k and all others play their star strategies in stage k and what is this this is the payoff of player i when he plays his star strategies in stage k others play their star strategies in stage k and at previous stages players have played some some arbitrary strategies gamma okay arbitrary k minus 1 arbitrary profiles are here now this has to be better than this okay so what is there on the right hand side here I, player i has deviated in stage k to a strategy gamma i k he is lift uh, deviated from his star strategy in in the in stage k others are still sticking to their star strategy which is minus minus i k and on the right hand side i have this the same k minus 1 profiles for the previous k minus 1 stages the one same ones that are there on the left and we want this to be less than equal to this for not only all players so you want this for all players uh, for all gamma i k for all players i and for all gamma 1 to gamma k minus 1 why is there a for all gamma 1 to gamma k minus 1 because regardless of what was played in the first k minus 1 stages the k stage strategies should be chosen such that they are in equilibrium okay so so which means that your k stage what you are going to do in case in the k stage has to be basically is essentially tuned to the exact information uh, exact subtree that has come up in that stage okay so here remember you have a for all gamma 1 to gamma k minus 1 okay so for every so you have to pick a uh, you have to pick a uh, you have to pick a strategy in the kth stage such that regardless of which history has brought you to the kth stage you are uh, it is your it's it you are in equilibrium all right yes no 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 so so gamma k uh, gamma i k right in stage k will have one function here another function for this another function for this another function for this etc what it what this is preventing is from you to issue it's preventing you from uh, coming up with a function that will work you know that will ignore this information for example it's preventing you from coming up with a common you know sort of uh, doing a threat across these uh, these subtrees because it has to be in equilibrium regardless of how, which tree you've got into that doesn't mean you are taking the same action in each tree of course there's a there's a function here there's a function here the function here all of these collectively defined gamma i star k okay but each portion of it has to be chosen in such a way that it is in equilibrium regardless of which history got you there okay so this is at stage k now let's write it for k stage k minus 1 can you tell me what should i write for k minus 1 for k minus 1 i now have profiles up till k minus 2 okay up till stage k minus 2 but k minus 1 is anticipating the equilibrium from stage k 
right so here now i would have gamma i star k minus 1 gamma minus i star k minus 1 and then i have gamma star from stage k this is less than equal to 1 to gamma k minus 2 gamma i i don't need a star here uh, gamma i k minus 1 gamma minus i star k minus 1 gamma star k so what is the for all now for all is over gamma i k minus 1 which is his deviation in the kth stage it has to be true for every player so for all i and it has to be true regardless of what what history got you there right regardless of all of this so so regardless so for all gamma 1 till gamma k minus 2 and coming back now working back now to stage 1 so at the, at stage 1 what do you expect you stage 1 in stage 1 you are play uh, each player is playing taking into account that he is play that in all the subsequent stages he is played in this kind of recursively rational way okay so stage 1 he now has gamma 1 so where do i put the stars on the left since i am writing for stage 1 all all should be star right yeah so gamma 1 star gamma 1 star 1 gamma my uh, sorry gamma i star 1 gamma minus i star 1 and then i have gamma 2 star gamma 3 star all the way till gamma k star less than equal to j i gamma i 1 gamma minus i star 1 gamma 2 star gamma k star ok so this is now for all gamma i 1 for all players i and for there is no other for all left right because i don't have anything anything to uh, I, you are at stage 1 so there's no history up till now okay is this clear so so this is this is a feedback nash equilibrium now so what is what kind of let me ask you this what kind of threats is this preventing This is preventing th a, the kind of threat where a player may say, well, he will couple his, he will say that, well, regardless of whether he is in this subtree or this subtree, he is going to play a certain, you know, certain type of strategy, where he is basically ignoring the subtree information. Inter subtree information cannot be ignored when uh, in an equilibrium like this because you are, uh, because you are in an equi you are in equilibrium in every subtree. However, intra subtree you can still issue threats, right? Because, for example, suppose this subtree is some kind of say, let let's say, uh, uh, some ladder nested or some form like that, in which there could be again multiple equilibria, and it, there could be threat equilibria for that for that subtree. That are threats within that subtree, not across that do not extend across different subtrees but within that there could be there could be imperfect information and a player could ignore information that is there in that subtree okay so now if you look for a, a ladder nested or whatever type of equilibrium in each subtree then you would get a ladder nested e feedback equilibrium feedback nash equilibrium okay now so what this means is that if you look at the, this here right this is just so ignore the first part then this is if this is essentially just a nash equilibrium at stage k there could be threat equilibria at stage k also if for every node there could be every subtree there could be threat equilibria so if you make sure that you ignore uh, there also players are not allowed to make threats or or you look for delayed commitment type equilibria in every subtree then you would get a delayed commitment type feedback Nash equilibrium. Okay.